If we seem a little disorganized this morning, it's only because we are. <laughs> so forgive us that. Uh, we are doing a baptism this morning, which I'll admit is my first here at uh, Trinity Church, and you'll, you'll come to appreciate that in a little bit. Uh, would you st uh, stand for a word of prayer before we sing our opening hymn? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, uh, that you've called us together this morning in worship. I thank you for the protection you've given over this place, our church, and freedom from the virus in these months and months. I pray this morning that your spirit, Lord, be poured out upon us. Touch every heart present this day, Lord, in our midst and online. Speak to us from your word, feed us from your table, and uh, warm our hearts, Lord, with your presence. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one God, all One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father, all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious, glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading and hearing of God's word. A reading from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, beginning with the seventh verse. Be silent before the Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. At the time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps. I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hasting fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of the wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and, dark, and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring distress on mankind so they shall not walk like blind and because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. In the fire of the, his jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed. For the full and sudden end, he will make all their inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of First Thessalonians, the first Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to any, to have no need to anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. They will not escape, but but you are not in darkness, brothers, for there there for that's a day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light, ch children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. So, let them, so then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Having put on the breastplate of faith and the love, the helmet of hope and salvation, for God has not disdained us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who saved, who died for us, so whether we are awake or asleep, we will live for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for worship. joyful 
to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, the nothing shame. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Reading from the 25th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given. 
he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. And now, Father, let your word be spoken this morning, and by your Holy Spirit, your word alone received. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, not exactly the lessons we might have chosen for a baptism service. Uh, maybe you found it hard to say uh, thanks be to God after those readings, but I'll, I'll come back to that. Actually, it's very fitting uh, for a baptism. We are near the end of something and near the beginning of something else. And I don't mean the end of my time here as your interim rector and the beginning of Chance's ministry as your new rector, although that's certainly very close. What I mean is the end of this church year, next Sunday being the last Sunday of Pentecost, the last Sunday of this church year, and the start then of a new church year, the first Sunday of Advent, November 29th, and I think it's very fitting that my last Sunday in your midst is the last Sunday of a church year, and that chance starts with you at the beginning of a new year. A new year uh, is starting in a new season filled with promise and hope. But let me emphasize, not a promise and hope in a man, a rector, although I'm sure he is a good man and I know he'll be a fine rector, but rather the hope in the promise that we share in Jesus Christ, the gospel of grace, the only reliable foundation for hope. So Advent is nearly upon us, the season of preparation for the Lord's coming both his first coming at Christmas and his second coming at the end of time. And so our readings today, like last Sunday, are readings about being prepared. And frankly, as I said, they don't seem like good news. One of our musicians said it this way, uh, really a bit of a downer this morning. <laughs> Let me sum up what you've just heard. In his, through his prophet Zephaniah, God says to his own people, Jerusalem, I'm coming to destroy you. You've been lazy. You've accused me of, of impotence, of not doing anything, good or bad. There's injustice, oppression, idolatry, disobedience in Israel, and I'm coming to destroy you. This is the great day of the Lord, the great terrible day of the Lord, a day of ruin and disaster and darkness and your blood poured out like dust. God says he's prepared a sacrifice. That would be his own people. And he's got guests coming. That would be the Assyrian hordes. And he says, I've consecrated and appointed them to bring my wrath. Jerusalem. Thanks be to God, right? <laughs> and then we have gentle Jesus, meek and mild, saying that the kingdom of God is kind of like a tough master, who, God the Father, who left his servants, that would be us, with his assets, some money, some talents, gifts to use for his benefit to grow his kingdom, and when he returns, well, you better be a producer. You better have turned a profit. Or even the little that you do have will be taken from you. Ugh. Is, is that the good news this morning? God gives us a shot at pleasing him. He gives us some assets to use, and we darn well better use them, or when he comes back, we're going to have it all taken away. Okay, so that's what it says. Ah, but let me put just a slightly different take on those passages. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with them, but they fit into a bigger picture, which I want to give you about the rest of Scripture and the nature of our God, who is indeed holy, just, pure, righteous, and demanding, and who is equally loving, merciful, kind, and forgiving. I want to be clear right at the front, God does punish rebellion. He punishes ongoing unrepentant sin, no question about that. Our mistake, if we're making a mistake, if we're hearing those passages and thinking, ugh, bad news, our mistake is in thinking that God's response to sin is not good. His response to sin is good. It is very good. Think about it. When we want another response, when we want a different God than that, Zephaniah calls the day of God's wrath the great day of the Lord. The other prophets said the same. It's the great day of the Lord. Jesus 
spoke of the great day of the Lord. Peter spoke that the Lord's return would be great, the great and glorious day of the Lord. And that's my point. The point is that it is indeed great that when God comes back, he's going to set all this right. He isn't going to be tolerant for, uh, of sin. He doesn't tolerate sin. Rebellion, evil, wrongdoing, bad consequences will come to those that deserve it. What kind of a world would this be if God were otherwise? If the God who created this whole world and set its motion, set in motion and made its rules and made us in his image, by the way, if he were tolerant of sin, if he imposed no consequences for wrongdoing, if in the end there was no justice, if those who murder and kill and rape and steal your life savings or murder six million Jews, if they had no consequences. If God just winked at all of that, and we, in his image, had no sense of justice either, no sense of fairness or consequences. It would be a world where the only hope in life was that you and I could be stronger and better armed so we could protect ourselves from the evil that's out there and do more harm to us than was done to us. Okay, my point is we are so used to living under a God who is just and righteous and fair and, Im and imposes justice that we cannot imagine what life would be like if we were living under a different God. Let's say under Hitler, for example, or in ancient Rome with a depraved Caesar. So it's good. It is great. When God returns, in the end, there'll be justice for all. This world will be set right, as the Brits say. He'll get it all sorted. That's good. That's great. It's not the whole story, because then, at the same time, there is his mercy. His judgment is good. His mercy is even better. You might have noticed, in my summary of what you heard, I skipped the epistle where Paul says, yep, yeah, wrath is coming on the earth, no question about that, sinners will be destroyed. But in his mercy, God made a way of escape, a way to escape his wrath. Paul says the day of God's wrath, the day of the Lord, will come like a thief in the night, sudden destruction will come, and there will be no escape except for the children of light. Those awake in Jesus Christ, those for whom he died, who have, as Paul says, obtained salvation through Jesus Christ. And we know how that's done, right? It's done by faith, by accepting him as Savior and Lord, and trusting ourselves to him, opening our hearts to the work of his Holy Spirit. And so, we're entering this soon, the season of preparation for his coming. What's the preparation? We looked at that last week. It's doing, right? It's having some oil in your lamp. Make sure your lamps are burning when he gets here, right? Isn't that it? It's the preparation. We're busy using his assets, Jesus says. That's our gospel today for the kingdom of God, multiplying the talents. The bumper stickers right after all. Jesus is coming back. Look busy. You should be getting up and leaving the room at this point. Can you, can you just, just say with me, no? No, that's not it. That's not the preparation. Our doings have nothing to do with being prepared for his return. Zechariah, actually it was Zephaniah. Zephaniah this morning said it, right? Silver and gold cannot deliver us. Works, effort cannot deliver us from the wrath of God. It's all about our hearts. Our preparation for Christ's return is the preparation of our hearts, which Jesus Christ alone can do by his Holy Spirit working in us as we entrust ourselves to him, as we seek him and submit to him. In just a moment, if Karis is ready, we are going to baptize her. And she is, this morning, taking the first step in the preparation for the return of Jesus Christ. Because her baptism in the church says that she is giving herself to Jesus and trusting him for her life now and for eternity. 
that her parents and godparents and all of us actually are going to promise that we will help her walk the Christian walk, to grow in her faith so she will be ready for Christ's return. Bottom line, when this age ends, God returns to bring justice and there will be great wrath, stunning, sudden destruction. And that is not bad. That is good, necessary, that evil is eradicated. And we know how that destruction will pass over us by being in Christ, belonging to him, known to him, knowing our sin, yes, and repentant of it, and accepting his gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. And the fact, fact is, if we have made that covenant with him, then actually we will be about his work. We will be using our talents. We'll have our lamps burning, not out of fear of his wrath, not out of should or ought or have to or guilt or shame or any of that, but because we love him. Because we're grateful for what he's done for us. For the day of his wrath is also for his church a wedding feast. For we are a bride. And he is our groom. See you there. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your promises of scripture the injustices and sorrow and pain and loss of this world are not the end. But you will sort it all and bring us to be with you. In Christ's name, we give you thanks. Amen. Now, we're going to, if you all, the family, uh, parents, godparents, can come up, would that be all right? Is going to get your booklets. Thank you. Dearly beloved, Scripture teaches that we were all dead in our sins and trespasses. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, said, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he commissioned the church to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Here we ask our Heavenly Father that Charis, being baptized with water, may be filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, and received as a living member of Christ's holy church. Therefore I urge you to call upon the Father, God the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of his abundant mercy he will grant to Charis that which by nature she cannot have. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. In unison, if you would. We present. Thank you. Karis, do you want to be baptized? Uh, for the record, she nodded yes. <laughs> Today, on behalf of Karis, I'm speaking now to the parents and godparents. This is an introduction for you. Today, on behalf of Karis, you shall make vows to renounce the devil and all his works, to trust God wholeheartedly, and to serve him faithfully. It is your task to see that Karis is taught, as soon as she is able to learn, the meaning of all these vows and of the faith that you will profess as revealed in the Holy Scripture. She must come to put her faith in Jesus Christ and to learn the creeds, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and all other things that a Christian ought to know, believe, and do for the welfare of her soul. And when she has embraced these, she is to come to the bishop to be confirmed that she may publicly claim the faith for her own and be further strengthened by the Holy Spirit to serve Christ and his kingdom. Parents and godparents, are you willing and ready to undertake this? I am. The Lord be my helper. Now to you four. 
do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God? And now for Charis. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, again, do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior? Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testament? Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? And now, uh, would the congregation please stand? This is your part to uh, take seriously a promise that you're making. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Yeah. We will. Thank you. Now, let us join together and proclaim our faith in the words of the baptismal confession, which is the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. And now let us pray for Charis, who is to receive the sacrament of baptism. That Charis may come to confess her faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We beseech you to hear this good word. She may continue in the apostles' teaching, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. She may walk in the manner worthy of the calling to which she has been called, ever growing in faith and all heavenly virtues. That she may persevere in resisting evil, and whenever she falls into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That she may proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ Jesus to a lost and broken world. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord, that as a living member of the body of Christ, she may grow up in every way into him who is the head. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord, that looking to Jesus, she may run with endurance the race set before her and at the last receive the unfading crown of glory. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, in your great mercy you saved Noah and his family in the ark from the destruction of the flood, prefiguring the sacrament of holy baptism. Look mercifully upon this, your servant. Wash and sanctify her through your Holy Spirit, that she may be delivered from destruction and received into the ark of Christ's church. And being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope and rooted in love, she may pass through the turbulent floods of this troublesome world and come into the land of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John in the river Jordan when the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are made regenerate by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit. May all who are baptized here be cleansed from sin, be born again, and may continue forever faithful in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. I'm going to pronounce your little name. Ferris Banchimalek Karis Schroff. baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. One more thing. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked with Christ's own forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this, your servant, the forgiveness of sins, received her as your own child by adoption, and made her a member of your holy church, raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, that she may enjoy everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now together, let us welcome the newly baptized, we receive you into the fellowship of the church, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his royal priesthood of all his people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity to do a baptism here at Trinity Church. Uh, glad you joined us today. It's great to have, a, we had a big crowd at, at eight also, and uh, so wonderful that you're, welcome, you're uh, coming back, and we've still been safe. We haven't had any word of any transmissions of any viruses here, and we're grateful to the Lord for that. Um, 93 new cases yesterday in Myrtle Beach, so we're kind of on the upswing again, so let's continue to be careful. Uh, lots going on. Our programs seem to be all up and running well. There is an angel tree outside, and I'm told there's six angels left, and it would be really cool by the end of the morning if they were all gone. Um, so think about that, whether you can pick up an angel to help give a Christmas to a child in foster care who might not otherwise have one. Our new rector, Chance Purdue, and his wife Kelly and their children Vera, Kate, and Jack uh, are in town. They arrived yesterday and they're, they slept last night. I, at least I hope they slept. They were at the rectory. Um, hopefully there was some sleep available. Um, and uh, they seem to love the house and uh, all are invited to help stock the place if you feel like it. Um, no, no obligation, but uh, the moving truck doesn't come to, till tomorrow, so there's kind of a mess today. You think about cooking, you know, no pots and pans and nothing in the fridge except what the feeders happen to leave. 
So if you could uh, do anything about that, that would be useful. Um, Paul's the painter. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, forgive me for that. Um, at any rate, they're there, and um, I'm sure that I, you'll see them in two weeks for sure. I don't think that they'll be here next Sunday in church um, in, in deference to my final day. But I suspect they won't come, although they're welcome, aren't they? So, uh, but you'll see them soon. And you can help them most of all by sending in your picture. If you haven't done it already, that our Breeze directory would be complete with photographs. I've been through there recently. There are a whole mess of names with no faces. So if you are one of those, please get your faces in so Chance and Kelly and the kids can know who you are. Yes. Um, Colleen Wakefield, wave your hand, Colleen, you all know her. She is coordinating some meals for um, the Purdue's in these first couple of weeks. So we don't want to overwhelm them and all show up with pizza on the same day. But if you would like to bring a meal to them in these next couple weeks as they settle in, talk to Colleen. She's coordinating that. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. And uh, yeah, I don't, they, they don't have food restrictions that, I'm, that I asked, and there weren't any. So um, I think your you know, pizza every day is just fine. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do, whatever you can do. Uh, walk in love, as you all do. Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, for we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. Apart from your grace, 
we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.